at the FW Mass Youth Center. Inshallah, Brother Rabbi will be talking about responsibility. May Allah SWT make us among those who will be responsible to proclaim his true da'wah, inshallah, for humanity. Without any further delay, uh, please join me to meet and greet Brother Rabbi. Give him a hand, please. Uh, of course, as we do with every blessed gathering, uh, we begin by praising Allah the Most High, uh, the Most Exalted, His King, His Majesty, our Master, testifying to His oneness and His greatness, and testifying to the prophethood uh, of His greatest teacher, and leader and mentor sent to humanity, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. everybody for being here. Uh, really, really honored and privileged to be with you uh, as always. Um, you know, I, I think the best Islamic center uh, in the country, at least the one that I've visited. Uh, Alhamdulillah, Islamic uh, school. Uh, we ask Allah to bless all of you and, and bless um, our children and uh, bless the generation and the hard work and efforts going on here um, to try to ensure the, the greatness of the next generation. I'll start. Uh, by speaking a little bit, there was a research that just came out, I don't know if anybody saw CNN, a couple days ago, Pew Research came out, uh, that said uh, by 2050, uh, the Muslim community, the Muslim religion, will be second largest uh, organized religion in the United States of America. Uh, with all the Muslims are on pace to uh, triple in number by 2050. Um, so all our schools, all our centers, all our communities, inshallah, will be getting much bigger in the future. And so that puts a bigger investment... I'm sorry? The Pew Research. Yeah, so the Pew Research is, is probably the most, uh, one of the most acclimated on national scale uh, research organizations. So we, we have uh, an immense responsibility uh, to uh, what will come in the future. Uh, and SubhanAllah, I, I believe uh, for all of us, especially as parents, or as mentors, or as teachers, uh, that we have a uh, work to do in laying the seeds. Our children, our gener the generation to come is the seeds. What, what will our harvest look like by 2050? Uh, what will our future generations look like in this country? And every single parent, every single person responsible for a young person, whether they're two or they're you know, 82, uh, all of us are in charge and shout out of that future. Isn't it that? So, uh, today's topic, Zakhwah Khair, Dr. Adnan and the, and the wonderful team, uh, for asking me to speak about one of the most important subjects on developing people, children, youth, young people, which is about taking responsibility, or as it's kind of referred to in the literature as self-reliance. Uh, self-reliance is uh, the ability to take on, and we'll define it inshallah, the ability to take on the responsibility that the world puts on you, and to perform with excellence, and I'll focus on these two points. Not just to be responsible, but to be responsible with excellence. Not just to do your tasks, but to do your tasks with what we know as Ihsan. And it's interesting that very early in Revelation, the Prophet ﷺ was given this hadith by Jibreel, famous hadith, Ya Muhammad, hib man shit. Oh Muhammad, love whomever you love, you're gonna separate from him, do whatever you wanna do, etc., etc. And then it speaks a little bit about prayer, and at the end, Allah Azza wa Jalla, Jibreel Salam, tells the Prophet Salam, that know that وَعِزَّتُهُ every believer's honor or dignity is in istighnahu عَنِ nas That he is self-reliant over the needs, over the demands, over the asking from people. Meaning he's very self-responsible. He's able or she's able to take on responsibilities for herself. Probably also, I know most parents, including myself, this is probably the most difficult thing for our children. To have them do what we need them to do themselves. Essentially what it is, right? To have them be the ones that are responsible for the things in their life. So it's a very big challenge, but I believe, inshallah ta'ala, that there is a way that we can all reshift the way we think about raising children, uh, raising young people, and then we can put this into action within that, and I hope we can work on that. So first, I wanted to find out a little bit about all of you. Uh, is it not going to work? Oh, there it is. Okay, Mumtaz. So I wanted to find out a little bit about all of you before we start. So, uh, I would like to know 
raise your hands, please. If you are somebody, a parent, a mom or dad, or you know, even a teacher, I, I, you know, these are general phrases, but uh, do you tend to say these kinds of phrases? Okay, raise your hands if you've said this before or if you say this often, okay? If you say, uh, if you, honey, my child, you tell your child, if you need anything, I'll be sitting right here, call me. If you need anything, please pick up the phone and call me. If, you, if there's anything in the world that you need, please, I'm right here, know where I am, just let me know. If you say this as a parent, raise your hand. If you say this often, raise your hand. Okay, good, good. If you say often, uh, honey, or you tell your child or your daughter or your son, I'll figure it out for you, Habibi. Habibi, don't worry. I'll, 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 I'll let you know what to do. I will figure it out. Don't worry. Uh, I'm going to let you know what are the next steps. If you say this in some form, shape, Raise your hand, raise your hand if you tend to say this often. Okay, good, all right, good. If you say, I am calling, if you, you say to your child, I am calling that kid's parents to invite you to the party. I am calling that teacher to talk to her about why you failed this test. I am going to pick up the phone and speak to Brother Ram and explain to him how rude he was to you. If you say this, raise your hand. If you ever, if you say this often, if you're willing to, Take this for us, okay, good, all right, good, good, all right. Just remember, your, remember yourselves in a second. If you say, or you tend to say, Honey, sweetie, habibti, if you're tired, don't worry. I'll finish it for you. If, you're, if you can't do it, I'll take care of it for you. Don't worry about it. Honey, you had a long day at school. Don't worry. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, ta I'm gonna take care of it for you. If you say this often, raise your hand. Okay, good, 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 good. Last one. And this is, this is my mom. Uh, if your son or daughter cooks, or does the cleaning in their room, or even does their homework, and you say, Habibi, sweetie, habibi, ya umri, you didn't do this good enough. I'm going to fix it and make sure it's perfect. You didn't cook this enough. You didn't fix your bed well enough. So I'm going to make sure it's perfectly done. Raise your hand. Raise your hand if you do this. Okay. All right. Very, very good. Okay. Very good. It's good. I like the smiles. I appreciate that you guys laugh at yourself. Right? It's, it's funny when we hear ourselves sometimes. I think it's nice for families to vlog themselves. If you guys know what vlogging is. Anyway, if you don't, that's okay. It's a millennial joke. I apologize. Uh, if you are the first person... Your parenting techniques are called, are called the protector. You are the one that protects your child all the time. Always there to make sure that if they need you, they can come to you right away. If you are the second line, second line, I'll figure it out for you, honey. You are the rescuer. You are the one that will always come to the rescue of your child. You're always going to, they know, they don't have to figure it out why. Because mom and dad are going to rescue me. Number three, if you say the third term, you are third term. This is a tough one, huh? This happens maybe a lot, especially with Arabs, they see. Uh, you are the over-involved parent. You take it, you love to step on people's toes to make sure that your son or daughter gets what they need, no matter what. If you are the fourth type, they call you the enabler. This, your enabler, they don't do what they're supposed to do, so what are you saying? Don't worry about it, I'll finish it for you. You're enabling their shortcomings. And the last one, the last type, a phrase, and it's a, a, a phrase for us, you are the perfectionist. If it's not perfect, I have to do it. If it's not done exactly as it, I think it needs to be done, then I do it, you're called the perfectionist. Now it's not bad or good, so we're talking about parenting for in general, and I, and I, I, I personally don't, I'm not a parenting coach or uh, person. Uh, I am much more focused on leadership development, personal development. That's, my, that's what I love to focus on. But parents, yes, father. You said often, right? So I said often, meaning daily. Let's say daily, right? Daily means often. If, oh yes, I know. I know. Sometimes you're all of them. I know. I, that's why we don't have self-reliant kids. So we. we <laughs> That's a joke. You're supposed to, you're supposed to laugh. They can't even wake up in the morning. So, 
we have to realize, so I, I am not a parenting expert, but I understand or I study the science of what develops leaders or people that are effective. And we have to understand that as parents, we are the first school of leadership. That's why I like to talk to leaders, parents. Because if we have poor parents developing certain values like self-reliance, then it doesn't matter what we raise as adults. Because they learn from the everyday habits from when they're five, right? It's much harder when I get them at the age of 25, right? It's much more challenging process, especially in deeper values that shape mindsets, that shape emotions, that shape personalities. It's much harder to see. So if we play the game earlier, it's a much easier game. And that's why I think it's important that we have better training of parents. And mashallah, you guys are, you guys are wonderful because you're here. You want to be conscious parents. So, Understanding this from a general perspective. So what, is, what does self-reliance mean? What is um, the concept of self-reliance? Why should somebody be self-reliant? Self-reliance, as I mentioned, is two things. It's number one, it's, it's, not, it's, not, one, it's not just taking responsibility, it's being responsible for the things that you have to do in the world. That's number one, right? The chores, the responsibilities, who you are as a young person, school, family, work, whatever it is, you have a responsibility to the world. But also at the same time, self-reliance doesn't mean I just do these responsibilities 20%, 30%, 40%. It also means, this is in literature by the way, not in not Islamic literature. It means excellence in deeds, excellence in life, excellence in actions. So also it's about not just them, not just raising children that do what they're supposed to do, but raising people that do what they're supposed to do with the best that they can do it. And there's a very big difference between them. I'm sure we know. And how we do that, inshallah ta'ala, we'll, we'll go through some of these. But it's a part of building this value of self-reliance. I think I've talked enough here for you to know. The behaviors that we don't like are rooted much deeper. So we're going to try to start rooting the young person, young man or woman, much deeper. So, what does self-reliance mean? So let's, uh, let's go through this. Anybody want to read the first one? So it's, number one, it's, we can read that together. We can read it together. Taking action, taking responsibility for my own actions. So number one, self-reliant people, they speak in a way that they know they're responsible, right? So I have to, it's my job, it's my responsibility, I'll take care of it, right? So it's number one, taking responsibility. Number two, it's the tendency not also to blame others. Because that's a part of destroying self-reliance. When a young person is always deflecting blame, or being taught to deflect blame, it's my teacher's fault, it's uh, this person's fault, that person's fault, it's my friend's fault, it's the, it's the book that's the problem, it's the writing. When you're deflecting blame, are you responsible? You never will build responsibility in a young person if they never take blame. If they take blame, what does that mean too? Apart yeah, I mean, from a deeper sense, that they're willing to be vulnerable, they're willing to be comfortable with who they are. So self-esteem plays a lot to it. But you have to take, you have to take your losses, you have to take your mistakes. You have to, we're going to talk about this a lot. Number three, it's a commitment to excellence. Not just doing things, but again, doing them what? As best as possible. So that means giving the most effort, knowing how to do it the best, right? So it's more involved. And last but not least, it's learning from other people the best means. Right? Learning from the right people. And again, we, I always, I've mentioned this point a thousand times. And I think Muslim, Muslim organizations, Muslim parents should realize this. I think we think that you Muslim youth will save the ummah. But youth will never save anything. Because if they're not conscious and effective and they have a mindset that's different, they will do the same things. Humans do what humans see. Humans do what humans see. So we have to be able to set up an environment where they see the right things as well. And that's why actually this, I, this is a part of a longer workshop I did for parents at Mass. It's called Cultivating Values. And the first part that I discussed with was teaching the parents how that they need to be responsible before the kids. Kids learn responsibility from what they see more than anything else. So it's about that, that, that process. So, yes, go ahead. If there's any questions, go ahead. Yes, go ahead. Yes. So, this is my opinion. Yeah. That this definition fits responsibility towards self. Because we tend to be responsible towards others, 
but not to be responsible ourselves. So that so th some of the responsibilities of what I have to do as a human being are responsibilities to other people, right? Responsibility towards self and then yes, for, for sure, for sure. The number one step of anything in life is the the change of the self, right? There, we're never changing anybody else without changing ourselves. And I'm talking about as parents, as adults, as as youth. So we want to focus on the change of the self. Yes, absolutely. Uh, we can talk about other things. So actually, one of the books that I use this, they divide values based on two parts: the self of be the values of being and the values of giving. So there are values that I am, and there are values that I do. And the value of self-reliance is under the I am values. So I am self-reliant, then I will be caring, generous, loving, compassionate, merciful. Right? But this has to come first. I cannot understand the responsibility to other people before I have a really good responsibility towards myself. And this is the most important you know, prerequisite for the leader to lead others. Uh, leaders, um, wonderful children, right? So anything, absolutely. That there must be a responsibility to oneself, for sure. You cannot save, you know, famous Imam Salaj quote, you, if, if the plane is going down, they tell you, even if your child is dying and suffocating, save yourself then save your child, right? You can never save anybody else until you save child. Allah just says, in Allah la yughayiru ma biqawmin hatta yughayiru ma And you know, you have to save yourself first. Not changing anybody else, for sure. Any other questions? Yeah, but... Uh, self-reliance, stop them. This is the point, this is the conflict between selfishness and between, yes. and between, for example, like culture, for example. What you mentioned in the previous slide, that for example, you have, you know, you do not tell your, your child that I'm here to help you, but in my culture in Arabic, for example, they say, you know, and that, you know, yes, absolutely. So we will discuss a lot of the cultural things in a second. We will discuss the, the relationship between arrogance and ego and what self reliance is. Because there there is sometimes it can be too arrogant or you can be to ego, I think if you're referring to that, yes. And of course, there's different things in our culture. I'm going to get to more more questions, but we're we, we're gonna we're gonna be able to inshallah, first let's identify what self reliance is, then we're going to talk about how we build it. So we're just in the phase of identifying how it looks like. Okay, very very cool, excellent. All right, uh, I don't know where this uh, this changes from here. Okay, good. All right, so th there's some things here that I, uh, you know, we could talk about more more sense. But just very quickly, understand the definition of self-reliance. So self-reliance is to assume accountability for something being done or not being done, right? So accountability again is the definition. We, I think we've made the definition clear. What does it? What is? What is? So let's, let's, let me ask you simply in the simple terms. Uh, what, when your child is self-reliant, what do they do? What behaviors let you know that your son or daughter? is self-reliant. What do you want to see from them? Raise your hands, please. Not all at once. Yes, like what? Give me a very specific example. What, is the, what does it look like when they're self-reliant? I'll give you mine. Maryam, mashallah, this week. I, I, I'm very proud of Maryam sometimes. My, Maryam is my six-year-old. Uh, Maryam, this entire week, is bake sale week Friday. So she knows, you know, you, you get a really good treat, reward at the end. If she wakes up in the morning, gets stressed by herself. Every single day this week, they were sick last week, alhamdulillah, didn't have us. Every single day this week, Maryam woke up before me and her mom, and she got dressed and came and wake us up. So if I see that, I'm like, wow, self-reliant, right? So what I'm looking for. What are you looking for that's self-reliant? What does self-reliant look like to you? Raise your hands. Even, I want you to give me an example. Anybody? Yes, sir. I mean, is it again prayed by the Okay, very good. So the daughter comes in, and your son or daughter, uh, they get off their phone or whatever it is. It's 2 o'clock, they go and they pray by themselves. No reminder needed. Good, excellent. What else? Anything they can do without a treat. Anything that they can wear? Excellent, very nice. So anything that they do from themselves without a reward, without a carrot at the end. Very, very good, which is also a very dangerous concept. I'm going to talk about that a little bit. Because sometimes parents, I know that everybody does this, we rely too much sometimes on punishment and reward. Right? And so if there's no punishment or reward, what happens? 
there's no self-reliance, right? So we have to be able to get the engine going without the punishment or the reward. So that's very good. I like it. Yes, Sister Mina. Yes. For his homework, for, I'm not supposed to remind him, I'm not supposed to call at the school and send him back what he's missing at home. Right. This is his responsibility. Right. Very, very good. Excellent. Okay, good. Yes, what else? Also, self, um, sorry, uh, taking initiative. Okay, very good. Like what? Give me an example. I don't know. I mean, um, don't wait until I ask you to do something or to remind you to do something. Right. Um, like what? Give me an I, I give you the many example. I'm just, I'm sorry to dig. I would like you to dig deeper. What, is it, what does it look like to you? So what, if they take initiative on their own, what is that? For what? Give me a, uh, maybe an example from yourself. Clean their room by themselves. Excellent. So room is messy at the end and after they're done, they need to clean their room. Good. Excellent. What else? College application. Yeah, do your college application by yourself. The deadline is... January 31st, you have to do it yourself. Very good, excellent. Okay, what is, what is, uh, what do self-reliant, what are kids, what are kids that are self-reliant saying? What words do they say? What are, you know, when somebody's self-reliant, what words do they use a lot? I can. I can. What? I will do this. What else? I will take care of it. Good, what else? I got it, thank you. Trust me, I got this. I'm sorry? I got it. Thank I got you. it. Thank you. Very good. What else? I know. I, I, I know how to do it. I'll figure it out. I'll find out. I'll search it up. I'll look it up. I'm going to YouTube it. I'm going to... Right here. It's all the way. Very, very good. Excellent. Number three. We'll go through this very quickly. Um, the last one. The last one. What do, what do people need? So if you're self-reliant, so dig deeper. So self-reliance is a behavior. We talk about words and behaviors. But what does a young person need deeper within them to be self-reliant? So what, is, what brings self-reliance? Okay, support is good. Encouragement. encouragement is good. No, but deeper within them. What is encouragement supposed to build? Confidence. Confidence. Self-esteem is very, very important. Because what happens when I, I don't have self-esteem to take responsibility? If I'm shy from failing, if I'm shy from making a mistake, I'm shy to take, I'm shy to say I'm sorry. So am I self-reliant? Absolutely not, right? So self-esteem is extremely important. What else is very, very important? I'm really looking for two things. So everything you guys mentioned is good, but one more very important thing. High expectations of others? High expectations ruin, uh, high expectations of others, no, that mess, uh, no, I don't think so. I don't think, but you're, you're the doctor. <laughs> I will defer to you every time. Yes, that's right. <laughs> no, I expect this because, you know, kids will never expect of themselves more than we expect of them. So if you uh, think that, you know, oh, I don't think you can do it, so they will resign to the fact that I cannot do it. So, okay, very good. So they should be in this encouragement a little bit, right? Risk. Ability to take risk. Ability to take risk. Good, very good. What is the ability to take risk? A lot with self-esteem for sure, too. And I'm, I'm getting at the very core. Because self-esteem is very important. There's one more thing I'm looking for when it comes to understanding the world. Good deeds. Good deeds, good deeds no. The courage. The courage. So courage is self-esteem. That's the same thing. Very good. It's, you're right. Exactly. But what? Maybe pride. Pride? Uh, like having this... Uh, is that you mean? Uh, so, so, so that's, that's self-esteem too, right? It is self-esteem. They're all very good. They're all rooted in self-esteem. It's one word. I'm looking for one thing. Ability to analyze reality well. Because what do non self reliant what I tell you that they do? If they always see somebody blaming other people, do they ever understand how to analyze reality well? So the analysis of life is very, very important. That I, I see around me these things are very, very important. So you know what this entire slide is about? This is not about what your kids should do. This is about what? This is about you guys. Yes, very, very good. So the question to you is, how many times do you initiate by yourself? How many times do you say the words like, I can do this. I can take care of it. I will all the time. Mother's only the time, of course. It's important that we understand that seeing self-reliance 
is uh, the first tool of building self-reliance. And so it needs to be clearer in the minds of young people. What did I, I think, I, again, we talk about values a lot. I've been here many times. We always talk about clarifying, about value something important, right? If it's something important, it should be apparent. A parent should be in the very conscious process of always showing self-reliance as a value. It's important to be self-reliant. So that means first and foremost that they do it. So I'm, this entire slide is about what we should do. And then when we should do it, it should translate I know I will talk about why it doesn't, but it should translate to our children if we do the right things, right? Because if they see self-reliant mothers and fathers, they should be self-reliant if we are not one of those five parenting parents in the beginning, which actually hindered self-reliance, right? So we're going to talk about that in a second. Very, very good. Excellent. Any questions on this? Very good. So let me give you guys a couple of case studies very quickly. Okay, I, I, there's a lot of slides. I'm not going to go through all of them. You guys can come to the workshop when I do it again. So this is a case study. I'm asking you guys a question, okay? So the, the case study says, I'll read it with you. So Maryam is in ninth grade, and she forgot an important science project at home. The school secretary allows her to call home and tell her parents to bring in the project. Maryam lives not too far away. Now, I know, so this, this, I know this is... Uh, you know, suburbs and things, things like that. But let's just imagine, okay, that Maryam lives yeah, I mean, right up the street. Like she's literally walking distance to the house, okay? Walking distance, and everybody knows her well at BHA. Okay, let's use BHA. Very good. So what would you do as a parent? Raise your hand. Uh, if you were a parent, what, what would your, your, her mom do or her parent? What would you do? So would you, raise your hand if you would, drop everything you're doing, and bring the project to her right away. Raise your hand. Hi, hi. Don't be shy. Have courage. Have self-esteem. Be responsible. Okay, good. So you would bring it right away. Interesting. So if you're cooking, if you're cleaning, if you're in Walmart, it doesn't matter. I'm going to drop what I'm doing, go home, and bring it to her. Okay? All right, good. All right. Interesting. Because I want to history the situation. Well, right, they're honest. They, they, they pass the honesty value. Good. Okay, number two. I ask to bring the project in at the end of the school day during dismissal. Look, I'm coming in at the end of the school day. I'm going to tell the secretary, look, I'll come in. When I come pick her up, I'm not going to, I'm not going to leave what I'm doing to bring it in. Raise your hand. One person? Okay, that's... What are the consequences of a project? I don't, I don't know. Sure, bad grade, good grade. I mean, does it matter? Does it, it matters if it's... Um, okay. Uh, I don't. I don't know what the consequences are. I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to understand what you would do. Yeah. Let's say the consequences are bad. Yeah, she's 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 gonna get late. What is the consequences of the class? She's gonna get ten points off. Right? What's the consequences of the classroom? Not saying the the options we have. I am gonna. I'm going through them one at a time. If you're smart, you wait to the end. Uh, right? Number three. Uh, tell her she won't bring. Tell the secretary. Tell your daughter that you will not bring in the project, you will have her lose points, and she will get mad at you. Raise your hand. I raise my hand. Okay. Very, very good. Sister may not take this course before. It's not fair. This is not fair. All right, last question, last one. Ask the school, ask the school to have Maryam walk to the house, get the project herself, you will sound cruel and irresponsible to her and the secretary, and Maryam will get mad. Raise your hand. If they allow. We said, I said in the beginning that they will allow it. Yeah, you'll raise your hand. That's what you'll do. Did you raise your hand before? You can only raise your hand once. don't allow it during school hours. Don't I said, I said we're going to make believe that they do. I think. We won't tell anybody, guys. All right, very good, very interesting. So the answer to your question, by the way, again, there's no right or wrong answers, right? I'm not, we're not here to dictate to anybody what they should do. But building self-reliance means certain things. It means that I value something. And it starts with the parent, right? I value, values mean that it is important to me. It is a life principle. I live by it. And this is what I will teach my child. So the book that I got this from, I'm self-reliant, said the correct answer is number four. That you will teach Maryam that she must go out of her way 
She needs to learn her responsibility, and she should get mad, but when she comes home after, you coach her through her lesson. You do, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I thought it's nine years old. Ninth grade, no, I said ninth grade. Ninth grade, they go, they go to school by themselves, right? Ninth grade, or what, what, it was ninth grade, right? They go to college by themselves. Ninth grade, yes. Okay, very good. Next one, next one. I want you guys to fail this one too. So, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go through it. I'm going to go through it. I have three, so I'm going to go through it. I'm going to go through it, all right? Uh, so, Abu Muhammad was sending nine-year-old uh, on a camping trip. So his nine or ten year old is going on a camping trip. Uh, the camp is for three days, there's no service and there's no technology. When Muhammad is there, uh, when, when asking Muhammad is he ready for the trip, Abu Muhammad realized that Muhammad was missing extra warm clothing, socks and snacks. Okay? So what would you do as a parent? What should Abu Muhammad do? Alright? Number one, Tell Muhammad before leaving what he's missing. Raise your hand. So he's going to a camp, 10 years old, and he's missing stuff that he didn't pack. What would you do as a parent? You tell him he's missing. He he no, he didn't leave yet. He didn't leave yet. He didn't leave yet. He didn't leave yet. Who would tell hey Muhammad, uh, you're missing three things, please go get them. Okay, good. Number two, uh, you would pack, you would go and get the stuff and pack it for him. Okay, you're gonna go get the socks and the shirt, and you're gonna put it in his bag for him. And what? And you and and uh, so he uses it. Okay. Who does this? Raise your hand. Don't lie, guys. Let's go back to that lie. Okay, okay, okay. You guys got smart. I think they got smart. Okay. You will let your son freeze and be hungry during the entire camp. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. 10, 10, 10 year old, bless you, 10, I'll get you. Even 10. Oh, okay, okay. I'll show him. That's fine, that's fine. Okay, okay, that's fine. Uh, you will call, who will call the camp leaders, and you will tell Brother Rami and Sister Allah, please bring extra supplies because some kids might be missing some stuff. Raise your hand. If that's what you would do. I'm asking you to be honest, not to pick the right answer. Yeah, your son is still at home. Okay, we're number one. So who says number one? Okay, who says number two? Hey, number one only two, three. Who said number three? Who said number four? Okay, good, good. I'll come back to the answer. The answer is supposed to be number three. But, 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 I will go through it. We'll go through it. Last one. Last one, Chawa. Uh, Aisha is six years old and she's using a sharp scissor to cut. Her parent is trying to teach her self-reliance. Aisha is independent. She tends to be independent. She likes to do whatever she likes to do and is smart. What would you do? Leave her alone? Raise your hand. No, of course not. Okay. Uh, who would uh, sit next to her and use the scissor? Let her use the scissor while you're watching. Okay. Number three, who takes the scissor from her and gives her a safer one? Okay. And last one. Who does her homework for us? She plays and watches cartoons. That's, that's easy, right? It's easy. Okay, good. Uh, very good. So the answer here is, of course, number three. So, excellent. Very, very good. The, the three case studies, so let me just talk a little bit about them and why, why the researchers talk about each one in that particular way. So, in each one, I'm sorry. Uh, in each one, there is an important, there's an important understanding that I have to show that there are consequences to not being responsible. And the more and more effective I show these when they are young, the more that they will realize these as we are old. And I, I speak to you, I, I'm a, uh, I, I, you know, I think when we, I can relate to many of the parents in here, that grew up in much harsher conditions than our kids live in. And the circumstances were very, very different. Right? We were sometimes big families, very low income, or conditions were very difficult. And so we were taught to be raised in a particular way. Now, there were a lot of issues, to uh, be, be very clear. I'm not saying that that's an ideal, perfect way, but there are a lot of issues that are within, ingrained within young people, especially, as I've seen, in suburbs, 
that they do not understand what difficulty means. If it gets too hot, you put it at 75. If it gets too cold, you drop it to 68. Life is always at my fingertips controlled. And when life is always that perception from when they are five, through their life, you know what they grew up to be? They grew up not to understand how to deal with challenges. And we raise subconsciously, especially in the suburbs, this is not a Muslim thing, this is a general thing that we tend to raise people that are extremely weak, weak emotionally, mentally, and even spiritually. There's a weakness there. And that weakness, and again, it's, it's important to understand, strength does not come without intentional pain that is short term. Short term, intentional pain brings long term health and success in anything in life. Long term pain is not good, right? So, my child always being hungry is very bad. Somebody, uh, kids that I deal with, that sometimes their parents come up and say, you know, you know they're, they're yelling about why they don't have any money. And they scream at you know, myself or other people responsible in some masjid, not too far from here, I won't mention his name. You know, they, they'll say things like, do you know, you, because they don't have the money, they're always dependent. They say things like, do you know how much a $350 mortgage is to an adult? And they're 10, 11, 12 years old. So what they're learning is that there's a lot of pain in being, or not having. So it's, I'm always pain. So long-term pain, which is not what we want. But short-term pain teaches somebody responsibility very well. If that's intentional. Intentional, right? I mean, what we mean by intentional is that by it is, it's, by, it's, it's by design. So if somebody forgets their homework, and they, they, they have to understand, look, if we've learned from the, the first week of school, the second week, the, third, uh, the first two months, okay. We talked about putting your homework and putting in your bag. When it's January or February, if you're still putting your kids' homework in their school bag, then you are a part of the problem. They haven't learned the pain of being responsible. If we are always, again, as, as kids get older, for always pampering them. They don't know how to function without electricity, without, without phones, without, without this, without money, without the debit card, without, without this or that. What happens is that they become so, if, by the way, in all the research and all the books mentioned, dependency is so subconscious. We don't realize that they are so attached to us. And that's why a natural tendency of teenagers is what they do. They go the opposite direction full force. Because they are trying to, and we're going to go through the detail of each level, they're trying to find their identity at that point. They don't want to be your little daughter or little son anymore. They want to be their own person. And if you push against that, and they pull, you create friction and it breaks. So the, the strategies are different at different times. But sometimes you have to be able to have them physically get hurt short term, like the camp. But the six-year-old, you never jeopardize, right? You don't, you don't let your 16-year-old uh, drive without a license, right? You never jeopardize health. A clear danger, that's not how you teach self-reliance, right? You don't push them at the edge of the roof. But you have to have controlled pain so that they understand responsibility, so that they understand how to be, take blame for themselves. Does that make sense? And someone wants to done us at 11 p.m. crying, Oh, of course, of course. Yeah, and and, and I, I want to tell you, I want to tell you I, 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 because I think I deal with your children the most. Okay, I, I, they, every single day, I deal with young people that are extremely, sadly, not self-reliant. So it is very hard, very hard to get, I mean, forget about parents, I know you guys struggle with it, but it's very hard in the real world that they don't understand how to do simple things for themselves. It's a, it's, a tra it's a tragedy that a 23-year-old has to be at that level. Right? It's our fault. So we have to take responsibility and be able to change it. So how do we, how do we, what do we do? So number one, let's, uh, let's talk about some things. Number one, how can we fix this? Number one, starts with ourself, right? So I talked about being the model. Number one, you have to be the model. You have to be the self-reliant model. What that means is that you have to show that I am always trying to improve. I'm, I'm being very practical with parents. Children have to see, young yeah, moms, dads, myself, they have to see that I'm trying to become better. Like I am working on something, I'm taking responsibility somewhere and I'm working on that. So it requires verbalizing, talking, communicating, sharing experiences, sharing pain, that's very, very important, 
right? It's very important to go home and sit with your 16 year old or your 11 year old and tell them about the, the difficulties you're having at work and the big responsibility you have and how you're handling it. Because they are, are, they are learning subconsciously that I need to be responsible. Number two, to teach them that I'm taking responsibility. So if you made a mistake, uh, I know it's hard for parents sometimes, uh, all of us, it's hard, it's hard to admit you did something wrong, but you know, sometimes we make mistakes. And it's our culture many times to never say I made a mistake as a parent. How can I say I made a mistake? How can I say that? I, made, I, I would never tell my child I made a mistake. I'm perfect. I am the most supreme human on earth to them. And I must remain that way until the end of time. That's a joke. You're supposed to laugh. You're supposed to show that I have shortcomings. I make mistakes. I'm really sorry. I, oh, Medium. I forgot to buy that thing for you. I, 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 I forgive me, honey. I, I'm, I'm really sorry that I was, you know, take responsibility. Show that you're willing to take responsibility. You don't say, you know why? It's your teacher that you failed. Don't worry about it, honey. It's a horrible, we're gonna, get, I'm gonna talk to the good, I'm not gonna get rid of her. It's really easy, that doesn't teach stuff, does that teach anything? That teaches that the world is always, our mama and baba will always fix everything. And that's why, subhanAllah, I, I heard this from, yeah, I, I heard the Prophet Tariq Sudan say this once. He said, if your son or daughter go to jail, leave them in jail for two days before you get them out. Let them learn that it is their responsibility of their actions. Save them in two days. But they have to feel it. Or else you've never taught them to feel the responsibility. They're 35 and you know, the, the musibah is when you get married to, you know, when your daughter or son get married to a baby, right? And you, you, you're, you're like, oh, what is, I don't know what's going on. Well, that's the reality that we have. We have grown babies getting married. And it's a, it's a sad reality because of self-reliance. I think we have to take dramatic steps to change that, inshallah. Yes? Is it okay if you tell the kid, at your age, I did this, this, this? Other than it is good. It is good. It is, it, it, is, it is good to show struggles in the past, like when I was 16, when I was 12. It's good. It's, it's, so it's important, again, I, I want to say this with the mindset that we're always trying to be positive. Right? We're trying to be positive with our kids. If we're doing it to put them down, that's not good. Right? So it just depends, it depends on how, you, you know, we can say the same thing in, the, in different ways, and it means a different, completely different thing, right? So we have to be smart and positive when we do it, right? So absolutely, it's a good thing. But it's not, it's not like you, you uh, I, as you know, sometimes our parents, you know, you X, Y, Z, when I was your age, I had five kids. When I'm you know, disease, tumor, cancer, that's not from our... So there's, there's a way that we should say things as well, right? So being positive is very important. Being loving, and I'm going to talk about these. It's, it's not, it's not self-reliance through hate. It's self-reliance through love and communication and care. And that needs to be verbalized as well, right? We have to talk about these things. So we talk about it as a family. I'm going to talk about it in a second. So never, and this is the last one. This is, the, this is why the last one, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Dick. This is why the last one is about uh, not, don't put too much pressure on them. Because sometimes also, a, a breaks responsibility. No, 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 no. You, don't, you put, don't put too much pressure on them. <laughs> no, no, no. Pressure means pressure means to live up to a standard that they're not really going to get to, right? So that also breaks the ability to, to take action, right? When the standards are too high and the pressure is too great, right? And I think we, we understand that that means like, you know, uh, your sister was a A plus student at BHA for 12 years. Look at you. So that's fine, but maybe they're intellectual capacities are different, maybe their emotional capacities are different. So that's what we mean by too much pressure, that there can be too much of an expectation done. So it builds. So sometimes you need to adjust. Sometimes we have to settle that my child is not the smartest child in the universe. It's okay for my child not to be the smartest child in the universe. There are B students, but they, I, I really believe that B students sometimes become CEOs of companies. See, dropouts become uh, Zuckerbergs and Gates. So sometimes you have to realize, hey, maybe they have a deeper talent that I need to better use and, and excel with, right? As long as the basics are met, there, there should be no, don't put too much pressure. That's very, very important, okay? Any questions on being the model? 
I have a lot of other things I can mention, but um, leave it for me. So I'm going to talk about mistakes in a second. I'm going to emphasize a lot about mistakes. Yes, it's a very good question. Because, you know, we tend to, oh, it's, it's really easy to deal with just like, you know, with kids in good times. Yes. But how about when just like things go south? Yes, like, yes, of course. Okay, so let's get to the next one. So I, I think the next slide is, um, so a couple of things I think are important here. Build confidence always is good. Always build confidence. Be confident and build confidence. Always reinforce and praise. I'm going to talk about this a lot. But you have to reinforce and praise when self-reliance is done. Excessive, like really strong reinforcement and praise. Very, very important. And third, and I'll add all the points, when they make a mistake, accept it, right? The mistake part, accept it and never shame. Shaming destroys confidence. So shaming is bad. But mistakes and learning from them is a good thing. Right? Right. So, so, right. So when Maryam comes home because she was, she, brought, she didn't bring her to school, it's bad to say, you see, that's why this, that, or the other. You're a harm, you're, you're always responsible. If you're shaming, she didn't learn the lesson. But if you're coaching her through it, Maryam, what could you have done better? Oh, when did you forget it? Oh, how could you, how can we make sure that this doesn't happen next time? What did your teacher say? How did that make you feel? All right, listen. Uh, I'm going to try to help you out from now on. Let's try to remind ourselves of our tasks at the end of the night. So that I will put my stuff away and you'll put your stuff away and we won't forget. That's a way to coach somebody, right? There's a big, there's a big difference between them. Uh, same with Muhammad after the camp. If you come over to camp, he's hungry, he's tired, and he's broken down. And you say, you see, I told you you're this, that, or the other. That's not, that's shaming. We never shame. We don't shame. I know parents shame. Our parents love to shame. Uh, many parenting techniques is shaming. Never shame. Shame destroys self-confidence, which is what I said is needed for self-reliance. So we, you have to build that confidence within them. All right, uh, let's go through preschool. So I, I, I don't know how many, so maybe it's a bit too much detail. We went into some of the things. I'll try to take major things. So from the age of around three to the age of around six, five years old, six years old, what can we do? Um, so uh, number one is a reward system. Anybody can give me an example of a reward system? For a three to five year old, what kind of reward system? Stickers. Yeah, stickers, very, very good. That's very popular in the classroom. Any, anybody with a three to five year old here? Any three to five year olds? I can fly through this, that's fine. Okay, I have, I have a three year old. We have a thing from Target that we bought. They put it up on the fridge as a sticker. You know, clean your room. Jenna's very young. I mean, it's basic things. But, you know, put your shoes on the shelf when you come home. It's a very, very basic thing. Oh, I put a star. Uh, you know, eat your, eat your dinner before you get any hot chocolate. It's a simple thing. But they have to understand that, hey, there's a responsibility, then there's a reward, right? There's, and it, it shouldn't flip. It shouldn't flip. Now, sometimes, I, I, I'll mention this very quickly. Uh, by the way, young kids love to do it themselves. You know, I have a, a three-year-old. Maybe you guys don't. You know, three-year-olds love to do everything themselves. You know who kills that spirit? The parents, the mom or dad, of course, 100%. I, I was at a convention in Chicago two weeks ago. I saw a very nice brother. Again, youth don't fix the problem if they don't know. He's a young brother, 25, 26 years old. He has like a three-year-old daughter. Her three, his three or four-year-old daughter, she's very, she's very social. She's very happy and she's smiling at me. She's coming to my hands. And he's pulling her by her ear, putting her down into the stroller, tying her up. I didn't say anything to him. But you know, it's killing a personality within them. So that they constantly are being told, me being social is somehow wrong. Me being active is somehow wrong. Me being, you know, me being a child is bad. So I need to be a robot. I think parents are raising robots. Like we expect to raise robots. And maybe, maybe, uh, maybe, maybe, but, but the, the father and the mother are raising, right? I mean, raising is the responsibility of both. But we are killing personalities before they, we don't give them nurture, right? So it's very, very dangerous that we do that. By the way, school already, um, I don't want to bash school. School has a lot of, a lot of good, but a lot of limitations. School almost runs like an industrial complex, right? It's a, just come in, don't talk, don't move, don't speak to the person next to you, sit in your desk, don't move from your desk, don't raise your hand unless you ask the question, you know, we're, you're going to do the assignment that we're told, like, can be quiet when you're doing this. Like, that's not the world that we live in 2018. 
So we're, you, you kill personalities at a young age, and I, I think that that's, parents, even if school is doing that, that's okay. Parents shouldn't do that, right? Say yes. Is okay? I can't, I can't I'm, I'm talking to the teachers on Monday. You can come to the teachers when I yell at them on Monday. So, so brother Ron, yes, yes. Yes, Alexa. So, so, do you want the students to talk all at the same time? No, I didn't say that. Not I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Yes, it's true. Uh, what I'm saying is that, that that there is in our world. If 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 you if you go to a job, right? In our world, it's like okay, come, sit down, sit in your seat, don't talk, don't move, don't think until I tell you to think. Don't respond to the question until I tell you to respond to the question. Imagine this is a child being raised in 2018, where the world is all about talking, moving, creating, coming up with it. Imagine that you are, you are ingraining these concepts in them from that age. So I'm not saying that the school system, by the way, if you, if most of the teachers in here know that a lot of research, the school system is usually 20, 30 years behind anyway. That's, that's you're just normal bureaucratic stuff. What we want to do as parents is we don't want to be that. We want to, we want to also build our children. We're, we're, school supplements parenting. It doesn't parent. So we have to be the initiator of the parenting. And even if school does that, I think we can, we can be creative in different ways. But again, there's a lot of research. I, I don't have a lot of time, so I'm trying to get through some of these. So some things we can do with, with elementary. So if your kid is between 6 and 11, you can teach them to take initiative or give initiatives. Uh, give them tasks, give them responsibilities. Uh, teach them simple things. You know, Maryam, uh, again, I try to give certain, you know, taking out the dish, dishes from the dish, from the dish rack. Okay, Maryam does that. Okay, Maryam set the table. You know, there's simple tasks that they can start learning and taking on. Get dressed in the morning by yourself. Simple things that we have to give initiative. Don't control everything. Number two is, uh, when they start, when they self-start something from themselves, over praise, over reward. Because that's a very good sign. Behaviors we like, we should show them that we love. Because the behaviors you hate, you know what we do? We show them. We hate it. So it has to be a balance. If there's no balance, then you're, we're not building a balanced child. So if you love something, show that you love it. And if you don't like something, you already don't show that you hate it, right? So we have to learn that also. Make decisions. A six or seven year old, I consult with her when we're going out to dinner. Maryam, what are you in the mood for? She's a part of decision making. Uh, uh, what, are, what are you, what, what should we, what kind of television should we buy? What kind of, uh, whatever. Start to consult with them. Start to give, make sure that their voice, um, oh, your voice is being heard too. Of course, sometimes major decisions. We're going on, uh, we want to go on vacation. Everybody, this, everybody, whatever. But then you can say, every, take everybody's voice. And you say, okay, kids, mom and dad are going to talk about it. We're going to figure out what's the best option, but we really appreciate your feedback. That's it. It, it doesn't have to be that they always an get answered, but it's teaching that there is what? I am, I am, my voice is being heard as well. Again, that's a part of initiation. By the way, if you go through any of the seerah or any, uh, any, any classical, this is all, this is all like, you know, 11 years old, they're married. We're like, wait, how are 11 year olds married? 12 year olds married? How are 13, 14 year olds married? It's just life taught them to be responsible, right? So we, we have to create those tasks even if they don't exist, right? Having the game Xbox and just doing whatever you want, or having the phone doing whatever you want, again, I really believe, and again, I'm not, I'm not saying this to put, I'm not here to put any parent down. It's hard. It's very, very hard. But we can improve things. I really believe that we can. You just have to believe it. We believe that we can do it, just how we can do it. Last but not least is, uh, so consult, don't manage, I have a lot of things. Let me talk about adolescence. I'm assuming most people in here have adolescents, right? I'll end with adolescents, because they're the most difficult. I just gave a whole presentation workshop uh, at, at the convention about adolescents. Uh, the number one thing about, you should know about adolescents is that they don't want to do anything you want, you tell them. Okay, this is the number one thing, okay? They are, they have to be rebellious. Adolescents have to be rebellious. They have to be. So that's, that's healthy. That is extremely healthy, and if you fight it, it will be extremely unhealthy. Okay? So this is, this is the, there are times, you know, there's times in life where you have to f go with the flow, right? You have to adjust to life. In certain times in our life, we can really control our kids. In certain times, we have to realize, hey, 
I can't really control. So I have to, I have to, I have to be more of a friend than a than a than a micromanager right now. Can't micromanage. This, well, I, I'm, I'm again being serious. A 16-year-old boy that I'm consulting with his mom. mom. Mom and kid have been meeting with me for weeks. He is so so many problems, so many fights at home. Why? His mom won't even let him leave the house. Well, I, word for word, without an undershirt on. It's fun. It's well, I, I think, I think it's funny. Well, this is real life. It's like the kid is so micromanaged. His friend, she has to know. His everywhere, every step, he has to know. He's 16 years old, and what is he doing? His Instagram has got pictures with girls. He's hanging out after school. Because what? It's causing tension. She's not letting go, because he's supposed to be mama's little boy. Mama's little boy will be a renegade in a minute. So you have to adjust. I highly encourage moms with boys that are adolescents to read the book Raising Cain. We studied it in adolescent development. Raising Cain, C-A-I-N. It is a case study of two very, very, very uh, scholarly and uh, 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 therapists and family therapists. They talk about just moms and dads and how case studies of how they deal with their adolescent sons. Only sons. Every, by the way, every, every demographic is so specific. So go and read that book and it will show you the success stories when they teach the parent, learn to let go. He dyed his hair. Okay, it's all right. He's hanging out with friends, I don't know who they are. All right, learn how you, you have to balance the equation as much as possible. Of course, not with, with limits, but you cannot micromanage. You cannot, they need to become a man, forcefully. And you will create more tension if you do, right? So. Give, give more room. So that s focus on the things that they're good at. Encourage them, especially in areas that they're good at. They love soccer. Keep pushing with the soccer. Okay, personal coach. Okay, uh, not not excessive, but physical. Not like watching it for 15 hours. But like keep pushing. It's okay. Let them get a personal trainer. Take them to soccer. Let them focus on an area that they are strong in. That's okay. Focus on their they they love science and NASA. Keep pushing with NASA. Take them to NASA. Let them be. Keep pushing with strength, it'll keep them what? Motivated. It'll keep them working. And that's really, really good. I love football. I, 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 alhamdulillah, sports kept me out of a lot of trouble. I was, I was going, you know, I, you know, I think sports in VHA is wonderful. Sports helps out so much. The more busy young people are, the better it is. Let them do what they love and be busy with it. And don't, don't try to micromanage. Go to Quran class. You have to go. You know, you, you can let Quran class go. Le have something else, but you can let things go. So you pick your battles. Pick your battles. The mom that I was, was dealing with, he loves going to debate team. Loves debate team. And she exiting out debate team so he can go to Quran Sundays. Uh, you, 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 you have to learn to battle. You have to learn to give room. They need to be self-reliant. Uh, number two, listen, ask, listen. Listen more than you than you talk. When they get older, listen more. Let them talk. Even if they're not, if they're not talking, encourage you talking uh, about something. You know, try to listen to what they're trying to say. Let them dig out. And last but not least, is trust them and reaffirm their trust. Right? Make sure that you tell them that you trust them a lot, so that they understand. Hey, mom knows I'm responsible. I understand I'm going to do the right thing, and that's very, very important. I apologize if I took too long. I know it's. I know we have to. We have, we have to finish up. Those are most of the highlights. Again, uh, these are just brief highlights. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that we can discuss. A lot of things. You know, Allah, it's amazing. You know, corporations and companies do trainings like this. They have workers that are not self-reliant, you know, not-for-profit organizations. So this is a this is a big this is a big area that we can really learn from. Uh, but as parents, really, there's just again some principles: always praise when you see it, always never shame, always kind of encourage and push responsibility. Let your hands go off of things, right? Let things just be. It's okay, even in public, it's okay. We do things a lot of time because of the way we look, the way I don't feel comfortable. Instead of what's the right thing to do, right? And that's something that I learned from somebody old is that, sorry, is that I learned is that kids do something because it feels good. Parents do the right thing. Adults do the right thing. So we have to learn to do the right things. Inshallah ta'ala, and the with the help of Allah Azzawajal and his tawfiq, is that we can start to ingrain in them this concept of self-reliance, inshallah ta'ala. Any comments or questions before?
the floor. Should, Should I take it? Can I have time for it? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, um, I have uh, first uh, a comment on uh, about things that you mentioned uh, and, uh, in the form of a question. Yeah. And also I have a question. So uh, you said if uh, they, uh, like Tarek Suhidan, Jazawa Khairan, if his son will go to jail, will leave him for two days. Yeah, not to this extent, but uh, uh, also if they forgot something. If, if this is the norm. Yeah. And they keep forgetting and unresponsible. Uh, I know we should, uh, you know, get, keep them to learn their lessons and everything. But if they are like us, yeah, uh, your brother, if he asked you to bring something you forgot, or your wife, or you will go, right? If you're dealing with them like uh, responsible, maybe adults, uh, maybe yeah, preteen, yeah. also and a teen, and, and, uh, and uh, the age of school age, maybe middle yeah. and high school, why yeah. not to deal with them like grown up and yes. help them? Yes. Uh, because also we want to keep the relation, and it's very easy to hate uh, the parents and get away from them. They don't help me. They, uh, you know, they are mean to me. And uh, how to balance between being, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, broke the relation or uh, break the relation or make it, uh, and to uh, have uh, teach them. Yes. Yeah. And also in the, the light of what I said that uh, we we'll deal with them like grown up and uh, I, you know uh, give them uh, uh, trust and help them like yeah. you help your friends. Right. right. This is the first. One. The second, how to help them have the Islamic identity in the way or grow the Islamic identity with the right word to, to uh, strengthen the Islamic identity in uh, the age of uh, maybe uh, high school age, I think. So, uh, so two two very good questions. Uh, I'll address the first one. Uh, so the first one is, of course. So, uh, and I, I want to make clear: it's a very good question. It's very difficult, especially as again I mentioned, as our youngsters get older. Again, habits are ingrained, so it's a lot more. It's more challenging. It's not impossible, right? And Alhamdulillah, they're still young, so it's, it's very very good. But it's not it's, it's not impossible. It's more challenging to erase uh, a, a habit, right? Habits build every day. It's based on things that we're accustomed to doing every day. Right? So every day I've been building, 10, 20, 15 years pass by, so then there's a, there's a personality. So at that point, it's like, oh man, this, this is not what I want. So how do I adjust it? So really, I think the first thing is really be, take a, a step of making them conscious and aware. And I think that it requires very good communication with the person. Right? So if it's a daughter or son, then making them more aware about, hey, look, you're 16, or 17 or 18, you're going to college or this or that. So give them this expectation or their awareness of what's going on in life. Uh, you know, uh, explain to them your own str struggles, right? As a parent, I have this responsibility, that was, and it's, it's not, it's not, uh, so I'm not, I never talk about breaking a relationship, right? We're not, of course, we're talking about doing it with love and care and with, with, with you know, just speaking without anger and frustration. So it, it's important to do that and give them an awareness of what's going on. And number two is to start really delegating to them. So if their room, for example, if a 16 year old, their room is messy, it shouldn't bother you that it stays messy for two weeks. You should never go into the room and fix it. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm giving up. Because there is, I mean you can discuss it, you can talk to them, but there are certain things that you have to let go. That's it, I'm not fixing a room. But there are other things that definitely I need to take care of. Like, you know, they, they, they have to, uh, you know, they're, they're uh, struggling with um, whatever it might be. It's school, you know, I, I, need to, hey, I need to follow up. You know, did you do your SATs? Did you sign up? Did you pay? I'm never going to do it for them. But I can be, cons you know, um, persistent with them on certain important tasks. But I cannot, I can't save everything. Right? At that point. So we have to focus on the important things with communication, with, with a building a relationship, for sure. And I, I hope I never said to break the... So break, I never said that. So it's situational. Actually. It is very situational, but... So to fix his room tonight, and tomorrow he has an SAT test, so to be very upset today because of the room... No. Or to have of course. Have to I have to learn this, exactly. I have to learn to sacrifice what's not important. And no great conflict over things that are not important at that point. Right? That's very important that we, we focus and there's, there's communication. It's, it's, again, it's much more challenging. Uh, t guys tend to be very challenging as well. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of, uh, again, it's, 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 not, it's not an easy thing. But we, we should talk 
to our children that we want to start doing this, right? Speak to them about this importance that they're getting older. Make them feel the responsibility as well. That's important constantly to make them understand that they're getting older and they have certain responsibilities. About the Islamic value, I think that's a, uh, probably a, more of a discussion for a longer day. But I think self-reliance is a very, very important Islamic value. And it's, it's really within our, within our, within the in, interworks of the deen and, and the seal of the Prophet the teachings of how the Prophet taught is that, you know, self-reliance is very, very important. And that we, 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 in Shatara, we want to build towards that. And I think we can discuss the other characteristics in, in the near future, Inshallah. Any other comments or questions? I don't know how much time we have. Any questions? Any comments? Okay, Hannah. Can you read the number? Okay, which number, Hamza? Hold on, give me the number.